Rule 51. Judgment. Section 1. When case deemed submitted for judgment. A case shall be deemed submitted for judgment. A. In ordinary appeals. Where no hearing on the merits of the case is held, upon the filing of the last pleading, brief, or memorandum required by the rules or by the court itself, or the expiration of the period for its filing. Where such a hearing is held, upon its termination or upon the filing of the last pleading or memorandum as may be required or permitted to be filed by the court, or the expiration of the period for its filing. B. In original actions and petitions for review. Where no comment is filed upon the expiration of the period to comment. Where no hearing is held upon the filing of the last pleading required or permitted to be filed by the court or the expiration of the period for its filing. Where a hearing on the merits of the case is held upon its termination or upon the filing of the last pleading or memorandum as may be required or permitted to be filed by the court or the expiration of the period for its filing. Section 2. By whom rendered? The judgment shall be rendered by the members of the court who participated in the deliberation and the merits of the case before its assignment to a member for the writing of the decision. Section 3. Quorum and voting in the court. The participation of all three justices of a division shall be necessary at the deliberation, and the unanimous vote of the three justices shall be required for the pronouncement of a judgment or final resolution. If the three justices do not reach a unanimous vote, the clerk shall enter the votes of the dissenting justices in the record. Thereafter, the chairman of the division shall refer the case together with the minutes of the deliberation to the presiding justice who shall designate two justices chosen by raffle from among all the other members of the court to sit temporarily with them, forming a special division of five justices. The participation of all the five members of the special division shall be necessary for the deliberation required in Section 2 of this rule, and the concurrence of a majority of such division shall be required for the pronouncement of a judgment or final resolution. Section 4. Disposition of a Case The Court of Appeals, in the exercise of its appellate jurisdiction, may affirm, reverse, or modify the judgment or final order appealed from, and may direct a new trial or further proceedings to be had. Section 5. Form of Decision Every decision or final resolution of the court in appealed cases shall clearly and distinctly state the findings of fact and the conclusions of law on which it is based, which may be contained in the decision or final resolution itself or adopted from those set forth in the decision, order, or resolution appealed from. Section 6. Harmless Error no error in either the admission or the exclusion of evidence, and no error or defect in any ruling or order, or in anything done or omitted by the trial court or by any of the parties is ground for granting a new trial or for setting aside, modifying, or otherwise disturbing a judgment or order, unless refusal to take such action appears to the court inconsistent with substantial justice. The court at every stage of the proceeding must disregard any error or defect which does not affect the substantial rights of the parties. Section 7. Judgment where there are several parties. In all actions or proceedings, an appealed judgment may be affirmed as to some of the appellants and reversed as to others, and the case shall thereafter be proceeded with so far as necessary, as if separate actions had been begun and prosecuted. An execution of the judgment of affirmance may be had accordingly, 
and costs may be adjudged in such cases as the court shall deem proper. Section 8. Questions that may be decided. No error which does not affect the jurisdiction over the subject matter or the validity of the judgment appealed from or the proceedings therein will be considered unless stated in the assignment of errors or closely related to or dependent on an assigned error and properly argued in the brief, save as the court may pass upon plain errors and clerical errors. Section 9. Promulgation and Notice of Judgment After the judgment or final resolution and dissenting or separate opinions, if any, are assigned by the justices taking part, they shall be delivered for filing to the clerk, who shall indicate thereon the date of promulgation and cause true copies thereof to be served upon the parties or their counsel. Section 10. Entry of Judgments and Final Resolutions If no appeal or motion for new trial or reconsideration is filed within the time provided in these rules, the judgment or final resolution shall forthwith be entered by the clerk in the Book of Entries of Judgments. The date when the judgment or final resolution becomes executory shall be deemed as the date of its entry. The record shall contain the dispositive part of the judgment or final resolution and shall be signed by the clerk with a certificate that such judgment or final resolution has become final and executory. Section 11. Execution of Judgment Except where the judgment or final order or resolution or a portion thereof is ordered to be immediately executory, the motion for its execution may only be filed in the proper court after its entry. In original actions in the Court of Appeals, its writ of execution shall be accompanied by a certified true copy of the entry of judgment or final resolution and addressed to any appropriate officer for its enforcement. In appeal cases, where the motion for execution pending appeal is filed in the Court of Appeals at the time that it is in possession of the original record or the record on appeal, the resolution granting such motion shall be transmitted to the lower court from which the case originated, together with a certified true copy of the judgment or final order to be executed, with a directive for such court of origin to issue the proper writ for its enforcement.